Yes, indeed. Let me say a pleasant good evening to uh, Barry Garcia, a man who's very outspoken. Uh, Barry, welcome. You're on The Observer, and it is a pleasure having you on. Hope all is well with you. All is well, all is well. Good evening to your, uh, your viewers and your listeners and, uh, and to the World Wide Web that is trending on your, on, on, on your, on your cast. Thank you so much. So I, want to, I want to dive right into the heart of it. Stand your ground policy. Uh, that, tell me, where do you stand on such an issue? Well, um, we already have that issue where home invasion, any type of home invasion or anyone enters your property, Okay, without your consent, you have the right to treat with them in any manner that you deem fit. So if they come in your property to hold you up and you have a cutlass in your hand, you are entitled to use the cutlass. If you have a gun, you're entitled to use the firearm. If you have a fish gun, you're entitled to use any means necessary, with any object necessary to defend your life and your property. Now the stand your ground in the United States was brought about in states like Florida, Georgia, Alabama and those places where they have a high quality, a high rating of racism. So they came out with the stand your ground law so that black kids, if they only walk in the streets, and they see or deem to possess a threat to a white citizen, that white citizen had a right to take out a firearm and kill them. That is what that stand your ground policy represents in the United States. It was based on racism. Now, I doubt that Ms. Kamala Prasad the sister, is basing the rules on racism. But however, stand your ground is not for Trinidad and Tobago society. You have the right to defend your life and property, and you have to do anything that is necessary to defend your life and your property. Well, well I think, yeah, Barry, let me interject here, yeah? and I think what, what the opposition leader is saying, that she proposed that we adopt the stand your ground legal principle, and this means putting into our laws the legal component that allows a person to use force in self-defense without retreating. Now, I, I don't know how this entire issue of race is playing out. I, I, you mentioned places. Can you hear me? You, we're hearing some noise from you there. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, mentioned, yeah. you mentioned places that, of course, historically have always had problems with race and the issues, whether it be the Jim Crow laws or what have you. But, but, yes, yeah, yes. But, but, but bear in mind, but bear in mind, when a prime minister says that, and he says it at a crime symposium, that today, if there's one aspect we may all be guilty of, is that the problem of criminality and violence was not dealt with sufficiently in a much earlier time frame, in the homes, in the schools, in the prisons, in the courts, and he dare say in the parliaments. Dr. Rowley added that we allowed slow, moderate, defiant behavioral trends to increase. Now, in, in all of this, it, it reflects nothing about color. It reflects nothing about ethnicity. It reflects nothing about geographical locations. He said we, collectively, as a society, from all walks of life, we allowed this situation to get out of hand. Although he is the one at the helm of our affairs. So is stand the ground really the issue here? Or is it the fact that there has been a failure to safeguard the lives of the citizenry? All right, okay, two things there. Two things I take from that, Mikey K. Dr. Rowley is right as when he was saying that it is it's a collective, it's a collective effort on behalf of every citizen. Where we where um the society has dropped the ball and allowed this this creeping crime, this creeping crime um, element to, to, to fester in the society. And I want to start with, um, with, 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 with the police, right? The police is the one that is responsible for treating with crime in the country. I have a former policeman, and we had a commissioner called Randolph Burroughs. 
Okay? Right. And he used to put fear in the hearts and the minds of the criminals. And you know what? You know what? Became a boss. Boss was dragged into the street as a criminal. So what it started there, that trend started from back then. Where you criminalize the police service, where you treat the police service as if they are they are responsible for crime, for, um, for the extradition killings of persons. And that allowed the police to, re, to to take a different course of action. Okay? Now they're trying to reintroduce that, but they are doing it in a very stupid manner, I must say, so I don't want to dwell on that too much. So that is one part of it. The other aspect of it, I have already said, I do not believe that Kamala Prasad Bissessa wants to create any racism or any race in that stand your ground law. What is happening? We already have stand your ground law. You have the right to protect your life and property by any means necessary, even in the streets. Even in the streets. A person becomes a threat to you, can defend yourself by any means necessary. So Stan Yogo is not is not wanted. The legal framework for that is already enshrined in the laws of Trinidad and Tobago, in common law, in statute law, and within the constitution. You have the right to defend your life and property. Take for instance, okay. for example, a mother with a child and a man comes to attack the mother. The child has the right to defend the mother by any means necessary. And, and you're right. And, and, and you're right. And Barry, let me interject here. And you're right, but understand something. What Dr. Rowley spoke about wasn't something that occurred overnight. He said the main fact is that the heads was buried in the sand. They turned a blind eye that allowed this slow, moderate, defiant behavioral trend to increase. There had to be a beginning of this trend. And if you're coming into office and you're on the campaign trail, of course, promises are going to be made. And one of the major promises that was told to us is that Mr. Fitzgerald Hines, who is currently the Minister of National Security, was sent to Fairfax County in Virginia. And it was said twice on the campaign trail, and the second time when Dr. Rowley was Prime Minister opening the St. Joseph Police Station. One would hate to think that this slow, defiant behavioral trend came about only because someone was trying to gain political traction with an issue such as crime. So, you know, it, it, it contradicts everything. Go ahead. Mikey, that goes back, that goes back to 1919, Mikey. And I want to ask you a question. When Abu Bakr and them was arrested, where the guns went? Mm. And from that time to now, Abu Bakr was given too much prominence in our society, okay, to do as he, as, as he very well wanted to do. At his own will. And he had such soldiers who were criminals. And they were committing crime, and they went and they seek safety in you know, Abu Bakr. Then it became, then it kind of split with Abu Bakr and the Muslims. Okay, Bilal went one way, Mwaki went one way, they had a big split, then they came and they had another split where ex Muslims, Muslims, became gangsters, and all of that started to creep in. And the entire society was not paying attention to that. Then there are the Muslim people that were hiring these Jamaat and Muslims for muscle to go and collect beef for them. All of that was taking place. And that is where, the, I believe that is where Dr. Rowley is coming from. We allow that to creep into the society. It has now become out of control, I mean, now trying to fix them. Yeah, 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 but, but, but Barry, as far as creeping in, I mean, you, first of all, it was acknowledged by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley. The main fact that he could send one of his, his chiefs or one of his people to Fairfax County in Virginia because of similar population, similar issues that we have with crime, but they have less security personnel on their police force. 
So he understood that. That's all good and well. But is it fair to have citizens as sitting ducks who apply for licensed firearms and for whatever reason, someone is playing political games with it and leaving us as vulnerable, sitting out here, trying our best to protect our family. What do you say to the person who is confident to open your gate, jump your wall, come and terrorize your family, rape your wife and your daughter before your very eyes? And at the end of it all say, listen, hey, that's just how it is. Is stand your ground really the issue here, or is it the fact that there has been total failure when it comes to securing the citizens of this country? All right, well, look, let me answer that. Who is responsible for giving firearm license? My kid? Well, we, we had a commissioner who was making it quite clear that he vetted all the applicants. Yeah, but um, I want to ask you a question. Vetted who? Would have vetted the applicant. You and I will get an alliance for firearm. Um, we, we didn't apply. But, 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 but certain people in the society was getting 20 and 30 guns. That's that not a fair distribution of firearm. Um. How many did they apply for, Barry? It doesn't matter. How they come to be having so much? One man having 20 guns, Mikey. All right. But they. Okay. I know a man in Vancouver, okay. Vancouver Mikey. Go ahead. Has 11 firearms. But did he say. Yeah, but did he circumvent the man who was waiting for one? Possibly. Or maybe not. We, do, we, we can't know. And we don't know because why? The, the, the issue of firearms is not transparent. It is already the commission of police hands. It's not transparent. It's not transparent. Is that justifiable enough to tell someone who wants to protect their family by getting a licensed firearm that, listen, at the end of it all, somebody has 11, somebody has 21, so whoever you're trying to protect, we can't help you? How does that justify the issue? That, and that, and that, is my, that, is my, that is my take on it. All right? Because there are people out there who, who are justifiable. Need a firearm to protect the life and the family, to protect the property, to protect their business, and they can't get one. And they could only get one if they come with sixty thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars. And you go buy a particular dealer, and he tell you, "Well, you're not on my list. You have to go and buy go buy a dealer down the road. He might have you on his list, and you have to pass thirty or forty or fifty thousand dollars to get a firearm. That is not fair. That is not equitable. That is not justified." So the society is turning the whole thing and spinning. The problem with the society, and I've said it right now, we need fresh legs. Well, and when you, okay. say, when, when you say fresh legs, are, are you saying what? A, a, across the political board, or is, are you saying across, as, far, across, as far as the people who are governing, are governing now? We need fresh legs across the political board. We need people with innovative and creative ideas. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Same seems to be strong and feasible. But stand your ground. Taken from United States culture, it is based on racism. It has a culture of racism that steps into it. And I, I and, for, and, 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 and you you, you are saying that you can put a face, a color, and an ethnicity to someone who is comfortable and confident of jumping your wall, terrorizing your family, sexually assaulting perhaps your wife and your daughter, first and foremost, you believe that this has nothing to do with safeguarding your life and the life of your loved ones. No, it no, falls no, only no, with race? No, no, my sister, Well, I'm expand on that, that, please. Expand on I'm that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the time you're going to know came from a culture of racism. And we got to be careful of how we act. We want to expedite that in Trinidad and Tobago. I am not dealing with the criminal element because criminals know no race, no color, no creed. Criminals doesn't operate like that. All right. And, and, and compounded with the fact here, uh, Barry, that. Mm. Here you have the Prime Minister, who is head of the National Security Council on national television, saying that the gang brains are in the prison and the crime network is being run by these people who are already behind bars. 
So you are telling us that law-abiding citizens, that the criminals who are already locked up are the ones who are calling the shots and the ones who are basically the mastermind and, and the top strategists when it comes to snuffing out the lives of our citizens. That is what we are being told. Okay, so you're saying the public service, all right. But but my issue here is when 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 you make go ahead when you make promises on the campaign trail, it shouldn't be about political traction, especially when it comes to crime, especially when it comes to securing the lives of the citizens of this country. If you can't deliver on that, then something is wrong. Go ahead. Best thing is to have a plan at least. Go ahead, your closing comments, Mr. Garcia. Go right ahead. Yes, sir. I I am one as a former police officer. I look as direct to the police service to treat with this crime issue. There are three main bodies responsible for things that is entering and exiting the country. That is immigration, customs, coast guard. We have to get in, in with that, clean up that. And then we have to clean up the police service so that the police service could function in a manner that is to treat with the law-abiding citizens, protect the law-abiding citizens against the criminal element of the country. All right. That is where we have to go. Thank you so much. As always, yeah. it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Mr. Garcia. Yeah. Very well, sir. So, PNM activist Barry Garcia weighing in on that issue. Uh, again, my thing is, I don't know how ethnicity you can put a face, you can put a color to it. But the main fact that there are people who are so confident, who believe that in your dwelling, in your space, it can be simply violated, that I can trespass, and I can come in, I can take your belongings, I can terrorize your family, I can sexually assault your wife, your daughter, your niece, whoever it may be, male or female. And I believe that it is a justifiable move because at the end of it all, the confidence that, I'm you, that I have to do this is because no one is doing absolutely nothing. And again, on the campaign trail, promises were made, not just once, but as well it was made again in government about this whole Fairfax County issue. Where do we go from here?